repositories. So here, this is a sandbox repository I created for, for testing our Chex plugin. And uh, so next, I think we should take a look at the class architecture. So it's here. And uh, so first we have to subscribe the event from GitHub. So here, this subscriber is provided, the, the green one is, sub, is provided by the GitHub plugin. And we just to extend this subscriber, this class, and then we can, uh, you know, kind of subscribe the event from GitHub. And so, so the next thing we have to do besides subscribe the event from GitHub, we have to listen to the uh, Jenkins jobs. So here we have this job listener, and extend the queue listener, and uh, also the run listeners. So we can do different jobs, different take different actions like create a, a check run when uh, when the run listener triggers the on start, and we can. Uh, you know, like complete the check run and when the job job is incomplete. So, and uh, uh, the extension point that provided now is this check run result. And this kind is, a, is an abstract class. So I defined some um, method like the get name, get output and get annotations. Uh, so if other plugins implemented this class, I can use this method to get the, the, the informations from, 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 the, from those consumers. So mm -hmm. I, I think uh, I'll start my demo. Uh, so that would be uh, clear. Uh, okay, so mm -hmm. here, here, this is a subscriber. And here we have the applicable method. So it, it, it decide whether this uh, whether this subscriber is uh, is applicable for the current project and uh, the events we have to provide the, the GitHub events you, you want to subscribe. Here we subscribe the installation repository event and the check run and check suit, which is here, this installation repository event. And, the, and you, you see the payload here is uh, it's added is because I installed I installed the app on my on my repository just now. You can see the uh, the the repository is sandbox, mm -hmm. and this 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 ID is the installation ID. We have to use this to authenticate as an as an um, repository in order to you know in order to uh, use the API to access the API. So here I'm going to deliver this payload. So here, so here we can receive this event, the install, in, installation repository event. And the up, up, we update, update the installation is basically we map the installation ID to we map the repository name to the installation ID because later when we are you know, handling the Jenkins jobs, we only know the repository name of the, of the job. We don't know the installation ID. So we have to, so I built, I made a map here. So that's basically it. So if, we, uh, so, so I, I'll show you the check run I made uh, yesterday, and here is a, uh, is a, uh, is it, and uh, so can you see it? Can you see it now? Yeah, I yes. see. It. So the the name is default Jenkins run. This is because uh, I have I have provided a default check run, and the name the name is default Jenkins run. So you can see here shows the default Jenkins run, but I, ha but I haven't provided other things like output or any annotations. So mm -hmm. there's nothing here. So, mm -hmm. so if we trigger the build again. Yeah. 
any problems with my dog? Oh, I don't know what's the problem with with my Jenkins instance here now, but uh, I think we can still keep going. Oh, here. Mm -hmm. Oh, because he has triggered the breakpoint. Break point. So here is uh, initialize. So when initializing the job, we just uh, you know create a new check run, mm -hmm. and here we can you know like retrieve the the source use the SCM API. And here we retrieve the head of the of, of the current revision. So if the head is a pull request, we can get the repository for a name. And you can see the full name is just I is a repository in my GitHub account. Mm -hmm. And uh, the head SHA. Okay, this this takes a little longer. What? Oh, yes, because yeah, yes, because I didn't open my local network. Uh, so I, I can't do it now because uh, my school network doesn't me allow to do that. So if I open that, I will be uh, drop off the meeting. So I, I just show you. I just uh, keep, uh, so the headshot is uh, it, it will give you the headshot of the current revision, which is now and now the this this mm -hmm. progress. And it should be one A C eight, and uh, yeah. if we keep going, there is uh, installation ID. Mm -hmm. uh, we can retrieve the installation ID from uh, from the from the map we created earlier. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So next, we get the token. It, this token allow us to access uh, uh, a GitHub API, and then then we use the uh, and here is how we retrieve information from the consumers. Uh, we, you know, just iterating all the consumers here the, the, by invoking the uh, all method. And uh, we create a check run here. So, so we, uh, mm -hmm. check run, oh, okay. So, yeah, here this method. Uh, currently, now uh, currently I just use the uh, um, uh, Apache client to create a check run, and here I this this, this is a this, here is a payload. These are some headers, and the, in the headers we have to bear the token. And here is a is a body. So the name is a source get name, and it's just uh, like the default. Uh, Default uh, check run source I provided here, so, you know, like return the default mm -hmm. checks name. So here is the head shot, and we set its status into queue. And here we send this, we send this uh, post to GitHub, and you will create a new uh, check run on GitHub. And so the next thing, so next thing when the job has started. Uh, almost the same, except uh, here, we just because um, because back back there we have added all the uh, the created check runs um, and to the to attached to all the sources to our our, our um, Jenkins run. So here I add actions. So later when the unstarted is triggered, almost everything is almost the same. Except here, we just instead of creating new check runs, we just uh, you know get actions uh, from the run, and we update these check runs we created earlier. So here, here also, uh, also I just I just simply set the state to in progress, and here is the state started at, and that's uh, and that's uh, time for this. For this job, also I send this send this payload to GitHub. It will update the check runs. So, so the next thing is incomplete. Uh, also like the on start. Also like on start uh, here is just we 
example here incomplete so you know when we so here we almost the same like the updating the check run we here complete the check run and also some payloads just the conclusion is success and the status is completed and completed at and so here we send this uh, payload to github it will eventually uh, become like this of oh, the same city created started 32 minutes seconds ago mm -hmm. so is this 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 check rise were created just now so okay so that's basically it uh, yeah that's the how the prototype currently works okay thank you so, it's really okay. nice yeah mm -hmm. thanks looks really good mm -hmm. so um, currently the the big the biggest problem you can see here is that uh you know uh, instead we provide this uh statically um, we have to retrieve the names the status and also when completing the job we have to you know get the conclusion from the consumers and uh, we have to we have to receive all these things and we have to retrieve the 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 information from consumers about this the output you know, like title summaries text annotations for for lines of a code mm -hmm. and the, the above things we can provide because the name uh when the users when the consumers are defining their extension uh, uh extend the extension point they have to you know uh, implement the return name and the so name is is in our control so the headshot also and all of this, all of these things, we may don't need to retrieve them from the consumers. Just the, uh, the below part, this, this annotations object, the start line, the end line. So, annotation novel messages. So that's it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. Um, I posted a link in Gitter. Um, just showing you how the GitHub branch source plugin is looking up the installation ideas. Um, I, I don't think it's a. I don't think it's a great idea for us to just store the installation ideas in a map um, and relying on a webhook event. For yes. Them. Yes. <coughs> yes, that's that's not very clear because uh, maybe you if you use that map, you have to you know persist that map information because. Uh, the next time when you restart the Jenkins instance, uh, you you won't expect the the, the GitHub to send you the re repository installation event again. Yeah, so this just looks it up. Yes, basically. Okay. So this is used to generate app installation token. So line one hundred six is where it looks up the tokens. It looks up the installation. Uh -huh. it looks up. So it. Curry is a yeah. So I don't so using this. So we have, if we have this method, does it mean that we don't need to you know store those installation IDs and uh, I can just uh, directly use this uh, use this method to create the token and to allow me to authenticate as an installation? Uh, basically, yeah. Um, not all the way, no. yes, but basically. Um, so this is a credential. So you call the get password method on the credential and internally the get password call will return this and it will also handle caching for you as well. Mm -hmm. um, so if you scroll down to line 137. So 137-ish. It's just down at the bottom of your screen at the moment. Okay. Get password. Yeah. So, so, so basically, calling the get password will handle it for you um, when you retrieve the credential. Uh -huh. Still, I'm not. So, so this 
this uh this method is just works as like the like this line of code here here right so basically it works yeah. like this okay yeah exactly okay so we still have had to you know have some way to know the installation id no um you just need the app id and the um um and the organization mm -hmm. so, oh you you made so you made a query to look up the installation id yeah so, okay that's cool so i think this answers these questions about i think you have asked a question like this right here? Yes, uh, this one of my questions was exactly this thing. What, so because if you do it in a map uh, dynamically yes. and Jenkins is down, you don't uh, see any. Yes. So it's better to query for it. Yeah. Yes, you, you saw the yeah. problem. Yeah, yeah. The, 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 the map is a problem I want to discuss today. So yeah. yeah. So I, I think if you just change it to use the GitHub branch source API for this. Okay then you shouldn't have this problem at all. It should just be handled for you. And we can always yes. adjust the plugin to make to, if we do need to expose more of this as an API, we can. If you need an API for getting the token. Mm -hmm. um, but for now, this is just handling getting you the, the, um, the, the bearer token um, that you need to pass to the API. Mm -hmm. um, uh, that's cool. That's cool. So, I think, uh, so do you have still other questions about my prototype? Or we can keep going our, our agenda? Yeah, one thing um, I was wondering, so currently uh, from the perspective of the warnings plugin, I'm just interested at the end of the build. So if the build finished, I think it's, okay for my plugin to report the results somewhere so yes actually I, I don't really care about the, the progress during a build yes so so basically uh you you are uh, uh, the the one is next generation plugin has you know uh get its reports during the during the publishing stage i guess right Mm -hmm, yes. So, so it's it's definitely before, uh, before the uncomplete, you know, before the uncomplete event triggered. Yeah. So, so basically, what uh, the consumers like the warnings next plugin, next generation plugin has to do is, uh, because I have uh, earlier uh, attached the, uh, attached the actions to the run right, and the run, and the, and the action. There's a, a, a check run source. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so what you need to do is to update the the, the 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 fields in the source. So here, this is the source. Uh, the, the the source I provided here. It extends, they implements an extension point. So here, th this is you know. We need we may need more discussion here because we have so many parameters that we want to retrieve from the consumers. Maybe we should not you know implement this in the class. Maybe we should use some you know like XML or or, or some other things. But uh, currently, I use this uh, as a class. You know, so if you if you implement get external ID and get started it and get conclusion and th this method will invoked. Uh, when the when the job is incomplete and I can retrieve the inform so I can retrieve the uh the, the information, the parameters from the consumers. So does it answer the question? Yeah. I think we need to talk about this a little bit in more detail, but this yes. is not nothing we need to do today. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. So the the biggest question is that we have so many we have so many parameters. So I'm not sure whether represent them as a uh, objects as classes is uh, is the right way to do. So the classes is fine. I wouldn't I wouldn't add everything yet. Just add the important mm -hmm. ones, and then yeah. um, and then people can come asking for what they want. Or mm -hmm. yeah. 
So the next thing is the uh, pipeline support. Uh, I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm not very familiar with the pipeline. So uh, I find some resources from the uh, Jenkins developer guy. And uh, I think uh, so from what I have known now, the pipeline, uh, we just need to, you know, like uh, implement some builders and uh, uh, the, the, the pipeline will like magically, uh, um, you know, compatible for our plugins. Is that the, uh, thing? In his pipeline. I think I have a I have a post about make the plugin pipeline campaign. I think you have a link in the GitHub channel. Oh. Okay, yes. make no, sure wrong. pipeline. Yeah. It could be in the how to how to guides down the bottom. The bottom. How, index of all how to guides, the last line. Yeah, yeah. So here, so here is what. It, it, this is all about the pipelines I know uh, from this post. So, so what I'm thinking is that maybe we should, you know, like, uh, like uh, those parts, these parts, we may, maybe we can, you know, implement them as builders or publishers, then this maybe uh, make them make this pipeline compatible. Are you, are you thinking of adding a step which allows people to report custom checks? Is yes. that what you're talking about? Yes. What, what's, but, what's the but, goal? Yes, the, the goal is like you, you are like in your, okay. like in your posts about the, so currently the users only can, you know, like, uh, update the informations in status form, like they can, uh, they can uh, create, uh, uh, create the runs about the code, like they can uh, use the reports from the uh, warnings next generation plugins or code coverage plugins, and they can report them to the GitHub, that's because maybe they can, maybe they can, you know, they, they can't uh, access this information in the pipeline script. So th th that's, that's one of my questions. So uh, does it necessary to you to make our, uh, you know, make our plugin pipeline compatible and or maybe uh, make makes them configurable by the users? Uh, uh, th 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 that's also my problem here. Actually, I the, don't think so that we need to make this happen in the beginning. So I think the first thing is to have an API for plugins. And if there is still some time, we can think about it to create a, a generic step that can report some texts or some mm. annotations. But I think uh, the main focus should be on support for plugins. Okay. And I think this could be added later on to have some generic thing. Yeah, I think this is in the, in the nice to have stuff. Like it'd be great to do. And um, yeah. so, so we'll put off these things. So another thing is also the general API. Yeah, I got some code stuff from 3D's proposal and uh, here he, he defined some general API uh, some code steps so I'm also thinking about the general API 
So here is the idea from P. Mm -hmm. So uh, actually, I think this 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 method actually uh, you know like um, describe what our plugins have done, like publish report to GitHub, like subscribe a trigger event, like pass a report from the customers. Uh, but I'm uh, but I'm not sure whether we can this you know this general uh, API I uh, where it works so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I'm not too versed in the Jenkins extension points and creating the APIs for other plugins to use. Um, so. So when I first think about the, the general API, is that when I saw because now we now for GitHub we use the GitHub branch source API. So <laughs> maybe we maybe we uh, maybe we can use the GitLab branch source API for the GitLab and Bitbuc, uh, Bitbucket, mm -hmm. the source uh, branch source for Bitbucket. So this, this, this is the first thought when I saw the the general API. And I, I don't know whether that's feasible. We could possibly we could we could possibly publish our API separately to the implementation as well, because the mm -hmm. GitHub checks plugin is probably it's going to have to depend on GitHub branch source and a long list of other plugins. Probably, we possibly might want to have our API plugin separate. Okay, okay. So now now I understand the question. Yeah. yeah. Actually, I'm not yeah. sure. Um, I also implemented a plugin with which is requiring Git, and I created an API plugin to make it yeah, extensible. For instance, use subversion. But I think this is something we can uh, look at it afterwards. So mm. first, just create an implementation that works, and then we can see if we can extend it in an API. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just publish it to the experimental update center. Well, yeah. first get something that works, and then we can publish it to experimental, yeah. and then we can iterate on it a bit. And... Yeah. Okay. and one thing that I'm not really sure about it uh, is the, the number of Git uh, API plugins we have. So we have a Git branch source API. Yes. And what is yes, the that... a GitHub API? So I'm not I sure. think you, you have listed them here, right? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> there is, yeah, that's that's very confusing. Uh, I show you. So first one, the GitHub API plugin is this conf confused me at the first. So that's a that's a typical API plugin in Jenkins for an external library. Is it just yes. ra it just wraps GitHub API and yes. provides it so there's only one copy running and we don't get class pass conflicts from different plugins running different versions. And this is called the uh, URL for GitHub for us. Yeah, so that handles all the GitHub API calls, all the authentication, and ca and most most of the caching. Although GitHub branch source is doing some of it as well. Here. So this is the the page, the home page for the GitHub API. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. So you can see. It's just uh, low level uh, API. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. And the so GitHub here, branch source is everything we need, or is the main, the main. Uh, yeah, the, the the main plugin we need to depend on. Yes, yes we have to. Yes, we have to retrieve the source, the the, the SM head from by using the SM API okay. implemented. It, right? And so. even if I so I, I'm not really familiar with the GitHub branch source API. I'm just uh, using the Git uh, mm -hmm. things in Jenkins. So if I just want to use a Git and GitHub, uh, is this the GitHub plugin or is this something differently again? The, the, there is an, another one it's called GitHub plugin. What is this plugin doing? Also not GitHub API, there is a GitHub plugin. Yeah, the GitHub plugin one's a bit confusing. It's, yeah. Um. Yeah, okay. Maybe I, I should look afterwards how these plugins. Okay. The okay. GitHub branch. Okay, the GitHub branch source API is kind. You know. Oh, okay. 
uh, the document it's, here it's, here is a, that's, the yeah, that's the user guide that one yes okay. yes it's like the here you can see the you, you create a github organization project mm -hmm. and you know, so this no that's our our ci server looks like for now yeah but can i uh, use your plugin without the github branch source plugin or is it intended uh, uh, because so, currently I don't use the GitHub branch source API plugin. So that, that's what I was just mentioning about possibly when we might want to separate out an API plugin that doesn't depend on anything GitHub related. Yeah. Um, and then the, then our plugin just uh, handles that extension point. Okay. Just so that all the other plugins don't have to depend on GitHub that want to contribute here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, the, the biggest problem for yeah, if if our plugin depend on the Git plugin instead of the branch source plugin, the biggest problem is that we we may not able to you know like retrieve the the name the 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 name of the GitHub repository from the SCM um, API implemented by the Git plugin. Mm -hmm. So the, so the, so that's something. So we can do this step. These two steps, we can we can do it. Okay. Mm -hmm. We can okay. retrieve the source. We can retrieve the head. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, the GitHub plugin, the GitHub plugin is that we depend on because we have to subscribe the GitHub event. So we just use a little part of it. The green, the, the green class is provided by the GitHub plugin, and we just extend this, and we can subscribe the GitHub event. Maybe that would be a good idea in your design document to have the actually plugins also here that we are required to use. So yes, see uh, which class okay. from which plugin. Mm -hmm. It would be a little okay, bit uh, helpful for me because I'm not uh, familiar with this GitHub uh, plugins also yet. Also so, for other developers. Yeah. Okay. So. Any other things to discuss more? So that's possibly uh, about my uh, the, the things that I want to discuss for today. So, um, and um, one thing uh, I'm not sure about was the uh, the action that you are creating. Is it just so you can find again your intermediate results? Uh, what? Sorry, you, are I, I, you are registering an action in the end of your design document, I think. Mm -hmm. Can you go action. to the, yeah. You mean this? Yes. Yeah. And this action is just to store intermediate results or how, or what are yeah. you, why are you required to use it? Uh, yes, <laughs> it's just, I, I need to uh, attach the actions to the run so, and carry the check run results to the uh, to the run, so I that, that I create this action, and this action is actually okay. a wrong action. So that's that's like the that's like the warnings next generation. I, I think you have the result action and result. Yes, so, actually, right. but I'm showing something in Jenkins, but the actions are just here to show mm -hmm. something in Jenkins, and you don't show so, something in uh, Jenkins. I, I think I, I think about this a little bit because if we don't need the the, the if we don't need to store the installation ID here, uh, maybe we can get rid of this result action. So mm -hmm. that's, that's why I'm currently using it, the installation ID, and to attach it to the bond. Okay, mm -hmm. understand. Mm -hmm. Okay. So to ask the other questions. Okay, the, the, about the status API and the, the, the checks API. Yeah. It's also very confusing. Uh, I'm gonna show you some. Um, that's no, no, that's not good. So you can see here, 
-hmm. and we have to you know like two checks the first the, the this one the continuous integration this one mm -hmm. is you is, is used in the status api mm -hmm. it just leaves one message this commit looks good so mm -hmm. if you go into the details you are going to the blue ocean of the jenkins instance mm -hmm. So you can get this uh, blue ocean of the Jenkins instance. Mm -hmm. But if you see, you want to see the detail of the checks, and you have to go to the the, the, the checks. Yeah, you know, that's, that's the difference. Mm -hmm. Yes, but my question was: uh, Is it configurable? So, or is do we now get both actions or both results? Yes, we, we should, get both the results. We should be able to suppress the other one. Okay. So, um, there's a, there's a way to, there's a plugin that turns it off. Um, so we should be able to do the same thing that plugin does, okay. um, and disable it once mm -hmm. we're stable enough. Mm -hmm. okay. the, the status API is the status is created by the branch source plugin, right? Uh, yeah. I guess. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, 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 any other questions? No. So this. Uh, oh, I just. I, I just. Um, where is it here? Um, I just posted the plugin that does it um, into um, the Gitter channel. Um, so there's a. So very easy to implement once we want to. Okay. To say no first state body. Okay. So, well, assuming we can add a trait automatically. Mm -hmm. It's it's easy enough for the user to add it, but it should should be doable. Otherwise we can update the plugin if we need to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so I guess that's all for our today's meeting. Mm -hmm. So cool. Thank you. It was you. really helpful to understand everything. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. I think the, the, the in the next meeting we we'll have to you know, talk more about the, the the API design, the the milestones, some things like that. Yeah, it's a good idea. Okay.